This is the most versatile mini PC I have ever seen. I mean, the bar is pretty low considering that most mini PCs are pretty much just little rectangles with no real expansion. Not this rectangle though. This is the Latte Panda Sigma, an x86 based SBC that breathes some fresh air into a super saturated mini PC market. Right off the bat, you'll notice that this looks a bit more interesting than other PCs you've seen. Now interesting doesn't always mean good, like when I told my first girlfriend that I loved her and she replied with, that's interesting. Luckily, the Latte Panda has a lot of cool things to talk about, so let's take a look. In terms of horsepower, it packs a pretty decent punch for its size with a 12 core, 16 thread Intel i5 1340p, integrated XE graphics, and up to 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM. From here, we can get into some interesting things that separate this from its competition. For storage, we get two NVMe M.2 slots, one PCI 3.0 and one 4.0, we also get another M.2 B slot and another M.2 E slot for Wi-Fi cards. Plenty of room for activities that we'll show off in a bit. Cool, now let's talk about IO, cause we are stacked over here. Right off the bat, we get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which again allows us to do some cool things. For networking, we have dual 2.5 gig RJ45 ports. Well, <laughs> Brett, why doesn't it have 10 gig? Shut up, you sound like a spoiled rich kid who only got a BMW 3 Series for their 16th birthday. We get four USB type A ports, two 2.0 and two 3.2.9 gen two by four by four all wheel drive, whatever. They're 10 gigabits per second, they're fast. There are three options for display out with an HDMI 2.1 port, display port 1.4 over USB type C, or DisplayPort 1.4 via the EDP ribbon port, which can actually drive 4K 144 hertz, if that's your thing. Then you have a headphone jack and a barrel power plug. 100%, this is the best IO and expansion capability I've seen on a PC this small. If that's true for you, then you have to comment, wow, this thing has so many ports, I bet there's boats everywhere. Okay, so that covers the hardware part, unless... Some of you may have noticed this funny looking section over here that looks just like the GPIO on a Raspberry Pi or something. Well, you're not far off. This board has a built-in AT Mega 32U4 microcontroller. And yes, those are in fact GPIO pins. You can straight up do Arduino coding on here and even comes with the Arduino IDE installed and configured. That's such a cool feature that I never really considered wanting. Having a little microcontroller connected directly to a powerful x86 machine opens up the doors for people with a lot more creativity than me. However, at the end of the day, this is still a PC and it could have all the IO and PCI expansion in the world, but if it's slow and buggy, then miss me with that. The 1340p gives us a respectable score of 9379 in Cinebench R23, which puts it on par with a mobile i9 from just a few generations ago. While the CPU is maxed out during this test is when we could see the most power this thing will draw, and that was around 60 watts. Yeah, max of 60 watts on here. We do have integrated XE graphics, which is nice since we do get Intel QuickSync for video encoding and stuff, but don't expect this to be a serious gaming machine. In Time Spy, it got some pretty low scores, so the expectations weren't very high. I threw The Witcher 3 at 720p low settings at it, and it was pretty playable, almost hitting 60 FPS. I assumed with those results that CSGO, or rather CS2, at 1080p would be a breeze, and it was. At 1080p medium settings, it was a smooth gaming experience. Remember, this GPU is integrated into the processor. Personally, I only really play League of Legends these days, so if you want to play that at 1080p max settings, then you'll have no problems. But to be fair, League of Legends runs on a toaster. But what about editing? Everyone is a content creator these days, so if you're going to buy a computer, it better be able to render some TikToks. I loaded up DaVinci Resolve and threw in a 4K ProRes clip along with a 4K H.264 clip. This machine handled the ProRes clip with no problems, which I kind of expected, but it was nice to see. 
The H.264 clip was decent, but it did show some stuttering during playback. But if you're trying to edit 4K H.264, then you'll definitely want to make proxies anyway, and this thing can transcode decent enough to give you a solid editing experience. I know like six of you actually care about this, so let's move on. In terms of just using it as a desktop PC for everyday use, it's obviously going to handle that with no problems. I mean, what did you expect? So overall, as is, this thing is a pretty capable little machine, but I wouldn't say it does anything well enough to justify getting it for any of the reasons I just showed. However, we praised all those M.2 slots and Thunderbolt ports for a reason. Using one of the open M.2 slots, I attach an M.2 to PCIe adapter, which now gives us so many options for expansion. I plugged in an Asus 10 gigabit NIC, fired it up, and no problems. Just like that, I was seeing 10 gig speeds. Note that if your card needs a little more juice, you'll have to supply it via this goofy ass four pin to SATA adapter that I had to special order and took two weeks to get here. So go crazy, plug in a 10 gigabit NIC, plug in some more NVMe cards, hell, even plug in a GPU. Wait, but what if I wanna use a big girthy boy GPU? Well, why not use the Thunderbolt ports? It's like my dad used to always say, big GPU, Thunderbolt. There are plenty of eGPU setups out there to choose from, but I decided to go with the dumbest. I'm not joking, this thing is ass. I mean, it works, but the stand didn't come with any directions, and that makes sense because the control board has no way to actually mount to it, and the card itself has no real way to mount to the stand, so it's just super flimsy. I stuck my Intel Arc A770 on here, which probably isn't the best GPU to use since Arc is a fairly new platform. Oh well, adversity only makes us grow stronger. Our TimeSpy graphics score went way up, but what was weird to see was that the CPU score went down. Anyway, I tried The Witcher 3 again, and it was a much better experience, even at 1080p medium settings. I fired up Resolve to see if there was any improvement there, and there was a little bit. The GPU is going to handle real-time transcoding and final exports much better than an integrated GPU, but your editing experience may not change too much. All right, so what are my overall thoughts on the Latte Panda Delta? Well, it's freaking cool, man. I love this thing. However, I'm not so sure who it's for. I mean, it's certainly a jack of all trades with its solid processor, great I.O., and plenty of expansion, but it doesn't really do one thing super well. Obviously not a gaming machine. It's not gonna replace your editing rig. If you're programming microcontrollers, then you'll probably just snag a much cheaper setup. If you like expansion, just use a regular desktop. And at nearly $600, nobody is buying this thing to work on Excel sheets and post memes to Facebook. Personally, I'd use it to test out Thunderbolt peripherals or throw it in my server rack as a low power stream machine and PCIe card host. Let me know down in the comments, what you'd use this for, because like I said, it's freaking cool, but I just don't know who's buying these. But that's all I have for you on this one. If you liked it, then drop a like. If you want more nerd content, then be sure to subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my Thunderbolt 4 enabled support system with plenty of room for expansion. Seriously, there's a lot of room if anybody else wants to join. You guys are awesome. And if you're still watching, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.